If you're able to go pro in Valorant, you'll potentially be able to make enough money to set yourself up for the rest of your life, get the opportunity to prove yourself as one of the best in a game with millions of registered players, and get major amounts of respect from the community. It takes tons of ultra hard work to get there, but if you're someone who's willing to put in the hours consistently, the possibility is there. And today, I'll go over exactly what you need to do to make it. Playing ranked and getting solid fundamentals is your first step to making it professionally. If you can't get to Immortal 3 or Radiant when playing ranked, there's no point in attempting to go pro. Ranked is very much just a 5v5 battle of who has the best aim, movement, and game sense. Unlike professional play, there's no pre-planned strategies in place. You can't anti-strat the team you're playing, and it's very hard to play off each other to a high standard because you're playing with people you've most likely never before met. With that said though, if you consistently match MVP in your ranked matches, you have loads of potential when it comes to playing professionally. Because if that's the case, you most likely have incredible aim, movement, and tempo. All attributes that could lead to you becoming a star in professional play. Given the right follow-up of a coach and other high-caliber teammates, that will naturally come as you follow the steps in today's video. Another thing that is very often overlooked is the networking aspect of reaching Radiant. The reason it's so important to get to these top ranks is because you'll meet people who already play professionally. What that means is that if you're consistently able to put up impressive performances, you might not only get added by the others playing professionally, but in some scenarios, you might even get offered the opportunity to play on a tier 3 or 2 team, where you can start building your achievements and also the road to being able to play full time. Now, to all aspiring pro players watching, you might wonder exactly what tier 3, 2 and 1 is, and how you can get involved in playing the different tiers of competition and bettering your abilities as an actual competitive player. To begin with, we have tier 3 players, who usually don't make any money at all from the game. They're typically not signed to a team, but they're rather friend groups of Immortal 3 and Radiant players, who have formed a 5-man team with a wish to sometimes in the future compete in tier 2 and of course also tier 1 long term. Tier 2 is where professional teams that gives out monthly salaries to their players begin to show up. However, the vast majority of people competing here still don't make a lot of money playing. Even with that said, the tournaments played in tier 2 can sometimes give out good prize pools. So if you're able to perform consistently when competing here, you can still make a few thousand dollars here and there. Tier 1 is full on professional play, where salaries can often be over 100k a year. This is also where you're competing against the other very best teams in the world. The main tournament that you want to perform in when playing tier 1 is the VCT. But the beautiful thing about Valorant is that anyone can qualify to VCT through opens tournaments that are available for everyone. So let's talk more about how you can become good enough to do that and also the technicalities behind it if you want to give it a go when the next opportunity arises. Now as I said to go pro you first need to get to the top ranks and if your rank is below radiant you play at least 2-3 to three comp games a day and you've been struggling to rank up, our sponsor has a crazy offer for you. The Immortal Roadmap program will teach and help you implement everything you need to hit Immortal Plus. They're so confident in their coaching that they are the only coaching program that offers a 5 division rank up in 8 weeks guarantee, or your money back. They've helped hundreds of students hit Immortal and Radiant, and their coaching staff consists of Compeki and over a dozen Radiant coaches with VCT experience such as Milan, who was an analyst on Ascend when they won champs in 2021, Screwface, who was the 6th man on AG when they won champions in 2023, and Gangsta, who played on Disguised, Immortals, and Knights. If that offer sounds good to you, sign up fast, as only 11 spots remain for Season 18. Circling back to the first layer of competitive play that anyone can participate in, we have Tier 3 tournaments and qualifiers. These tournaments can for example be open events, hosted by the likes of Twitch streamers or YouTubers, small and local lands where really good players most likely won't compete, or of course, most relevant to all of you watching, the in-game mode of Premiere. Premiere is Valorant's in-game tournament system. It includes five divisions, namely Open, Intermediate, Advanced, Elite, and the division we want to be in where you need Immortal 3 to be eligible to play, called Contender. All divisions before Contender have five tiers that you'll have to climb. Where you're placed in Premiere will depend on what kind of rank you have in Ranked and your previous history playing the game mode. So if you've never played Premiere before and you want to go pro, I strongly recommend just full focusing on Ranked until you're Immortal 3 before you start grinding it. If you just want to play for fun with some friends, then naturally feel free to play Premiere, even if you're in Iron. After you've hit MO3 and you've started playing Premiere in hopes to keep progressing further up the ranks, you will need to sign up for an Open Challengers League qualifier. This can naturally only be done when you are in the highest rank of contender in Premiere. This is also simply done through the in-game Premiere system. When you've signed up for the Challengers Open Quals, you'll have to face anywhere from 3 to 4 teams to win your first Opens. In Northern Europe this year, which is my region, only 64 teams signed up, whereas in North America, a whole 
poll 256 teams ended up signing up. This is a single elimination open qualifier, meaning if you lose one game, you're eliminated and out of the competition. Making it true, this initial open stage qualifier of the Challenger League is by no means an easy job at all. You're playing against other Immortal 3 and Radiant players who are all tryharding and their mechanics will be very solid. The way you can consistently win against these teams is by having better strategies, communication and mentality. Obviously, if you're hyper talented, you'll have better aim, movement and game sense compared to these players as well. But the real advantage can without a shadow of a doubt be found in your pre-planned strats. After having made your way through the open qualifier and won all of your games, you are yet again playing another qualifier, but this time a closed one against nothing more than five other teams here in Europe. And thankfully, this is not a single elimination format, but rather a double elimination one, meaning you can lose one match and still qualify through. The system is a tiny bit different in North America, although pretty similar. If you end up top two out of the top six teams competing in the closed qualifier, you play in the regular season of the Challengers League. When playing in the regular season, your goal is to qualify to something called the Challengers Playoffs. Four out of the eight teams that are originally in the regular season plays here. You will play for some prize money and if you made it into the top four you've already qualified to the first challengers split a very important tournament for your continuous road to go pro there are two more teams that qualify to the split coming from their performance in the regular season by placing both fifth and sixth these players will not have an opportunity to secure the first to fourth place prize money from the playoffs if you're one of the six teams here in northern europe spain or france you'll qualify to the second split after the playoffs and the regular season, which is far more important than the first one. Whereas on NA, the top eight teams have historically qualified to the second split, and for Japan, it has been the top four teams. So depending on where you're from, you'll have to place differently on the leaderboards in order to qualify. But when you've made your way into the second split, things become super interesting, because here you're playing for a spot in Ascension. Qualifying for Ascension is crucial, as this is where you get the opportunity to get your ticket to participate in the upcoming Valorant Champions Tour, or VCT for short. A spot in the VCT is known to be worth well over $1 million. So if you and four of your buddies make it into the VCT, you'll have made at the very least 200k each. If, of course, you're willing to sell your spot. If you make it to the VCT as a non-signed team of five good friends, you will undeniably also get picked up by an org. who will pay each and every one of you minimum 10k a month salaries, given that you know how to negotiate a tiny little bit. But obviously, even qualifying for Ascension isn't easy at all. Because when playing in the second challengers split, you will have to be the very best out of all eight teams that qualified if you're from Northern Europe, the best out of 10 super strong teams if you're from EU East, top 16 if you're from OCE, and I think you get the drill at this point. How many teams are playing for an Ascension spot varies from region to region. Ascension, unlike the previous challengers tournaments, are only played on three big main regions. You have the Americas, EMEA, and Pacific. EMEA and Pacific have 10 teams competing for a spot in the VCT and the Americas have six teams. If you manage to beat out all teams and come out on top, you'll have secured two years in the VCT, hundreds of thousands of dollars to all the individuals on your team, and you've proved that you're the best in tier two competitive play. And chances are you're more than ready to also perform at the very top level in tier one professional play. This journey is not easy. One small mistake along the way can cost you and your team the ticket to the VCT, making it all the way it comes down to to inhuman consistency, incredible teamwork throughout all the Opens tournaments, and unbeatable talent. Thanks for watching everyone. Take the first step to going pro by checking out the Immortal Roadmap program in the description below.